Okay, and then one more. Okay, let's start right here. <laughs> we can have your name and age. I'm Tanisha, I'm 29. Okay. And Tanisha, why did you have your balloon unpopped? Um, I just wanted to hear him out. I feel like he has a great fit and um, I liked what I heard so far. So, yeah. And now, Antoine, why do we end up popping her balloon? Um, just, you know, just not my type. Okay. Um, big on energy, you know. So, for me, I'm a no. You know, that's pretty much it for sure. Okay. Got it. And then we did pop one more. Let's head on over here. Let's start with your name and age. My name is Nai. Well, Naya, but I go by Naya Monet. I'm 26. Okay. And why did you um, have your balloon unpopped? I had it unpopped because I, he's a smooth talker. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you hear green flags and you also hear red flags. But um, anyways, he's a smooth talker. So I was interested in listening to what I was hearing. Okay. Um, but yeah, them pants are a little too tight to me. <laughs> oh, girl. Girl, I knew you was going to say something crazy because you got rejected. I knew... I knew it. the moment I seen you playing with that horse tail, I knew you was going to say something crazy because you got rejected. No, you know what? Let's hear how he respond because if that was me. <laughs> okay, and now why did we end up popping her balloon? Just wasn't my type, you know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not here to go viral from disrespecting no female, so... I mean, just not my preference. I'm not yours. Well, I was yours, but my jeans is a little too tight, but that's fine. Feelings mutual, baby. I appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> you have a nice smile. Appreciate it. Okay, let's head yeah. on back. You out here built like an unshopping colored pencil with your 3X eyelashes and that team who dress with all this low vibrational energy on this people's show. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Not to mention the ponytail is a clip on. Attitude is everything. You could have been the finest motherfucker on that show. You could have been a 9.5. But with an attitude like that, automatic one. Let that man be a man. I used to hate authority. I hated being told that I need to fix certain behaviors and traits about myself from my man. And his masculinity was offensive to me. I wanted him to be more like a woman. And then I realized... Now, three years ago, me and my wife had this same exact conversation. We used to speak about it before, but it was more in the form of arguments. And I don't know who, what book she read or who she started listening to, but she sat me down and apologized and things just completely changed after that. How sexy is it that he is a man and that he puts his foot down and he's assertive and he says, no, I'm not going to let you control me, boss me around. So that was one of the best pieces of advice that I got when I was healing and I was learning how to be a wife is to let your man be a man. Find it so attractive that he's in his masculinity, that he's confident enough to say, I'm worried about your safety. I don't want our reputation of our marriage or our relationship to crumble because you're out doing things that is questionable. Let him thrive in his authority, in his leadership, in his guidance, okay? Tell that man, thank you. Thank you for caring enough about me today to guide me and lead me in the right way. This is the type of videos that need to be promoted more on the internet. This is the type of advice that we need to see more of because I can relate to this. When I used to put my foot down in this month, it used to be met with so much resistance we used to be in here arguing about shit. I believe it was because of the way my wife grew up. You know, she was hell-bent on being independent and not dependent on nobody. And it went from just hardball, just pure resistance, to she started calming down. But the way she used to... It was started finding ways to manipulate it into her favor. I would make a decision, and instead of before where she would meet that decision with force... She would try to customize it and turn it in her favor. And I started realizing that. And I'm like, hey, no, no, we, we're not doing that. And then it went back to resistance. And then one day, bro, it just changed. You know what it was? She started listening to this lady called April Mason. That's who she started listening to. She started listening to April Mason. And then a lot of shit that I used to tell her, 
that she used to be like, no, that's not true, and you sound crazy, and now she's just like, yo, you, you were right. Yeah, you. Who are you, bro? Yeah. I'm Gil. You Gil. I'm looking for Keisha. Yeah, you was the one in her DM. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. We played you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We got your cash out. Appreciate you, boss. You a freaking of DMs, too. Yeah. We'll expose you, boss. No, no, no. You a freak, boss. What's in the box? 12-piece spicy. Put it down or we expose you. Put it down. You came with flowers too, boss? Oh my god. <laughs> Yo. Flowers, boss. Put it down, boss. Walk off, boss. I don't have it in me to have my wife stay with nobody like that and lead nobody on. I don't have that in me, dog. I, mm -mm. I've seen it done, though. I've gotten some food like that, but that was with like other girls when I was single. Yo, I have so much stories that I have never told y'all, bro. I have, mm, all right, look, this another one, okay? Me and her ain't even do nothing. We just, like, was cool, right? It was a guy that really liked her. He was older, too, actually. Now that I think about it, he was older. I don't know how old he was, but he was older. I had to go to school. I had no way of going to school. She got this man to lend her his car. Now, I thought she was going to drop me to school. You know, that was my... My thing, like, I right, yo, just drop me to school, whatever. You know, I'll give you gas money, whatever. She was like, nah, nigga, drive the car to school. I said, what? She was like, drive the car to school. I got him to lend me the car so you can drive it to school. Now, mind you, he ain't never did nothing. He ain't never did nothing. It, well, you know what? Some motherfuckers will lie to you, but she said that he ain't never cracked. He ain't never, actually, the messages, she showed me the messages. He was on that. He was trying to tap them cheeks. His whole mission was trying to tap them cheeks. To the point where his son really dropped off that car. And I drove that man's car to school for like a week. I don't understand why men go after like females for their body count. Like you don't see us females going after your body count. Tell me your body count. Hmm? Tell me your body count. I think it's the same shit. We're both human beings. It's so nasty. When you're chasing things in life, do you chase things in life that are easy to obtain or do you chase things in life that are harder to obtain? A man wants, when a man marries and he settles down, he wants his queen to be his queen. He want to know that that security system has always been working. Nobody has walked in and out of that house as they please. That's why the body count conversation is so, you know, important. And I said it before that I feel as though people in general with high body count, that goes for men and women, it's some childhood shit going on. It's some unresolved issues going on. 